Hello and welcome to this week's edition of My Generation. We're looking in this series at, uh, at what the young people think, uh, hearing it from the horse's mouth as it were. Uh, all sorts of issues affect young people and Elevate TV has been at the forefront of dealing with young people's issues. But all too often it's the older generation talking about young people. Today I've got with me uh, four young men uh, who have been born and brought up in this country. Uh, Ramiz, uh, Hamza, uh, Fazl Abbas and Amar who are going to be sharing their views on one particular topic, faith in the city. Uh, the city of London is a diverse uh, cosmopolitan place, heaving with people from all over the world, and the Muslim communities from every part of the world are here. How are those communities coping with uh, adapting their faith within a city which is effectively part of a secular, cosmopolitan, uh, very material uh, um, environment? Uh, I'm going to first, before launching off with the dialogue uh, in the studio, uh, introduce you to a short video clip which uh, should give us a little bit of a perspective from uh, some young people in the city. When they do something, what do they do it in the name of? Yeah. yeah. So and so is doing it in the name of God, name of Allah. Because they bring Islam into it, non Muslims or people out there will yeah, associate it with Islam because they, in the media they forget to say some, some yeah. minority Islam. newspapers generally have um, both and Muslims all in the same line. They're not listening to real Muslims and what their views are all about. trying to say is look people like us it doesn't mean we're terrorists when they were born brought up in a bloody Islamic family taught we we're taught to pray you know, like yeah, an early stage a cute man of Muslims that actually are like about most Muslims are as British as the next British guy sitting next to them yeah. mm. they're paying their taxes they're abide to all laws and at the end of the day Islam is a good religion and it does bring out good in people it's just a few lost individuals that decided to blow some people off. personally I'd feel so for them because they just lost they don't understand what is going on and they just find an easy solution. But it's a pretty stupid one. This isn't right. It's totally against Islam. If you um, connect Islam and terrorism together, it contradicts with each other because Islam in itself is peace through the submission of the will of God and people, they go and bomb themselves. I wouldn't say that this is what Islam is about and walking out and going in the streets, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you know, this person looking at me might be thinking, you know, he might be having, you know, suicide bomber or whatever. It's not what Islam is about. Islam recognizes diversity and we believe that it's a manifestation of God's uh, genius, that he's created diversity amongst people. And in the Quran it actually says, we have created, created you in nations and tribes so that you may know each other, not that you may despise each other. Race is a medium for communication. Doesn't Britishness say, be who you are, yet be part of us? So we integrate, but not assimilate. What's good about Britain is the fact that we have like the right to practice our religion freely. The fact that we can work in Majul Bab and like you know we can do whatever we want without people telling us what we can and cannot do. We can say whatever it is that we want, obviously within our limits, isn't it? Personally, I think it's really interesting to know what others believe and why they believe it, and then we can like see how they differentiate from Islam. You only get to know how similar that they really are when you get to know about them and living in Britain because like there's so many people that are from different um, areas and have their different religions it's, I think it's really good to learn about them
welcome back. And you saw a clip of various attitudes and opinions to uh, being a Muslim and relating particularly to the stereotype of violence uh, attached to Muslim uh, Muslims and especially young Muslims. I'm going to go around the table and uh, ask Ramiz to get the ball rolling. Ramiz, you saw the video. What was your thought about uh, what some of those youngsters had to say? And to what extent do you agree with uh, the idea of belief being quite a volatile uh, thing when it comes to Muslim young people and the way Muslim young people are perceived? Would you agree with the attitudes that the young people had in that video? I think the stereotypes, people generally on the street, if you ask someone, what do you think when I say Islam to you, I think the stereotypes are true and they would genuinely think, generally think that you are a violent person and you believe in these, um, these bad things that are circulated around. But per personally, I haven't had too much experience with that and th I'm thankful that I've got a good group of friends and none of them follow these stereotypes, so I'm, I'm thankful in that sense. Okay, uh, let's move on to Hamza, what, what's, your, what's your thought? Um, well, I kind of see the video as itself. It, it does, it's sort of, it covers all the bases. It kind of shows that there are people, who they, it accepts the fact that there are people who are, as they say in the video, misguided, um, and that they're unfortunate, etc. But it also shows that there is the much more, there are more people who think otherwise, mm -hmm. who um, believe otherwise that there is going up and being a suicide bomber isn't the way forward. Mm. And um, I think that's it's the realistic approach that shows the, um, the Muslim community at large in London, so. Okay. Was, was there anything you disagree? Amar, let's start with you. Do, do you disagree with anything in that video? Was there anything particular in terms of the views and attitudes of young people there that you didn't find uh, to be the ones that you would prescribe to? No, I think it was all, um, yeah, um, on the whole, I think it was pretty accurate. Um, they were talking about how how people are thinking and how it's in the media. How people aren't saying like um, they're saying that it's not so. It's, they say it's all Muslims and not just some Muslims. They're saying it's all Muslims. So that's that's the key word they're missing. Some because it's not all Muslims who are terrorists. Mm. And so yeah. I mean, uh, do you find that you? have that sort of attitude. You don't live particularly in the city. Yeah. You're slightly outside in Chelmsford, all you boys actually, from a, a smaller town. So do you think that um, uh, people even in the rural areas, they feel this about Muslims? Do you think, is that the perception that Middle England has of young Muslims? I think it's more, it's worse in the rural areas rather than in the city. Like in the city, I think people are forced to integrate as well, I think. So I think that helps the situation, uh, but in the rural areas, because uh, they obviously uh, after the migration, they have just gone and migrated in the cities and not so much in the rural areas. So the rural areas, there is a bit of a problem, mm. I feel. Uh, is this something that, do you have any stories or anecdotes where that problem manifests itself in your lives, perhaps? Or um, stories that you've heard? Well, obviously there's always the scenario of someone someone ref getting refused a job because their religion kind of prevents them from and they believe that for example Muslims can't be trusted in such a high pressure job and like they're violent people that I think I've heard stories of that thankfully I'm not in the position to get a job anytime soon but so I've heard stories like that I, I know a few people who've actually been in those circumstances so it's quite sad to know. Does, does a topic ever come up in, your, in the school playground or you know, in classes? When you're at school, your particular school, do you get this issue raised about Muslims and their beliefs and perhaps the idea of them being violent? Does that ever come up? Um, not really, no. Um, it's quite clean, so to speak. Um, I mean, outside, the more I'm actually in the class and the more I feel like, uh, the more I would like to think that actually racism isn't a thing because it just doesn't manifest in the way that I've heard it to be. It kind of feels like it's an urban myth, so to speak. Um, I mean, outside the home, I hear words such as um, institutional racism uh, come about, but when I'm in school, either A, it's hidden from me, or B, um, it doesn't exist. Do you have a cosmopolitan group of friends? Because you go to a majority 
uh, a school where there are majority of middle class English kids, I would have thought. Um, I wouldn't say they're middle class, but uh, it's, it's an interesting. You, you get some people who are very top end, and you have some people who are, complete, who are middle class, as you say. And, but then you also have the, a couple of people like Samar uh, who just moved into the country, etc. It mm. becomes a, and it becomes quite interesting to see how it all fits the pieces. I mean, I'm about to enter sixth form, and in my sixth form they accept international students who don't actually live in the country. <coughs> and um, if not in the past, now it's my year would definitely have to adjust. So to multiculturalism. Yeah, to multiculturalism. So it's a multicultural school. Uh, I wouldn't say statistically that's true, mm. but socially, because of the involvement that I've seen with non-white British people in the school, it does look like that mm. to a certain extent. Mm. I'm not sure I, I've got that totally clear, but we'll move on to, I think I'm going to shift on to uh, the idea of faith prejudice. Do you think you've ever faced prejudice because of your faith, Amar? Prejudice as in? Prejudice as in, you know, there's, uh, in various forms, it, perhaps it even different. within the school, outside school, where because of your religion, you're discriminated against. Would you say you're ever discriminated against? No, I haven't personally been discriminated against myself, but I know cases where my friend, he told me that his mother, she was on a train once, and she wears hijab, obviously. And so, so someone didn't let her, her sit next to her because she asked her, I think you've got a bomb under your scarf. So yeah, I, I can tell it's quite common outside, but not to myself. Okay, do you, do, you, do you feel the pressure of, uh, say, 9-11? 9-11 is, was a big landmark in, in the way the West thinks about uh, Muslims and perhaps young Muslims. And growing up in this country, you're the generation that's grown up in the shadow of 9-11, in a way. H how do you think, Rumi, how has that, that shaped your, your perception of yourself? and Islam and perhaps the society you live in? It's kind of made me feel a little bit more careful in, in public. I kind of make sure to, to um, conduct myself in a way that if someone was to judge me, they would judge me on who I am rather than being a Muslim. And it, I'd, I'd try to show my morals in a good way so that they wouldn't have worse perceptions of Islam. And yeah, that's all I can say really. Let's go around the room on that one. What's your thoughts on this? I think 9-11 was the turning point as in, as in which the Muslims were looked badly upon for, for the first time maybe and because of media involvement it's been so huge that, that it's still left an aftermath and people still, still don't truly know Islam and they kind of remember the 9-11 because it's a big huge media blow out on it. Do your friends ask you questions about it? I mean, just are they scared to ask questions or, or, on it or are they uh, open about it or do they, does it ever come up in casual conversation? Do they want to they know do, about it? They do ask questions about it. They do it in more a jokingly way. So, so, so you either laugh about it, like with them, or Using a jokingly way, and then sure. you're, you're kind of forced to laugh with them. <laughs> it's kind of like it's kind of like, yeah. If, if you don't, then you're kind of set apart, kind of thing. Okay, Ruiz. Uh, um, if my friends do, I think they notice a, a sense of sensitivity in the topic itself. They know it's quite a sensitive topic, and if you delve too deep, you you're um, at risk of going too far. And obviously, I, personally, I'm f fine with to discuss it and. Some of, I do have discussions with my friends about it, but I think they've understood that, like Gamar said, not all terrorists, or not all Muslims are terrorists. So. What sort of questions come up? Why do they do this? Who does it? Like, is it your, your group of Muslims? Or, like, it's mainly just, they're trying to see whether you have any relation to their religion kind of thing. So it's a safety thing for them, they're just checking you out. <laughs> but I mean, that seems quite strange because you've grown up within their circle, they know you as a human being for many, many years, and yet yeah. they still uh, they have to ask the question. Is it sometimes curiosity about the faith? Does it lead to curiosity about what you believe? I think, yeah, I think it's more curiosity rather than safety measures. Because mm. I think if they know more about your faith and know how much, how distant you are from these terrorist 
these and bombers, mm. then I think they have a little bit more. They feel a little bit more accepting, ac accepting to Islam rather mm. than me as a person. I think. Mm. And uh, do you feel that you're equipped? All of you. I mean, question to all of you. Do you feel, Amar, that you're equipped to deal with these questions? Do you have the answers? Are you comfortable giving those answers? Do you feel under pressure? Under pressure, yes, most of the time, because sometimes you don't know the answers. So like, if they ask you stuff like, um, "Who who's doing this?" and like, "Why why did they do it?" So sometimes, like, our younger generation, not like our age, but you know, younger, like, say nine or ten years old, because they don't know because it's literally screaming at your face on the media, so they'd know about it. So it would be harder for them to answer the questions. So they would be under pressure. But our age, I think, are a bit more advanced in because we've been taught this in like madrasas and masjids how to answer these type of questions. Okay, okay, that's really interesting. Most madrasas may not deal with this, but I know your madrasa is a particularly well-run one and has an uh, exceptional yeah. kind of uh, uh, unique kind of way of doing things. But uh, uh, can you tell me a bit more about uh, how you're equipped to answer these questions? Well, we talk, we talk about current affairs and stuff like that in Madrasa sometimes, and we talk about like um, contemporary issues like across the world, and you know, so we we usually know how because it's not like to, they don't tell you this is how you answer this and this question. They'll teach you stuff, and you can take from that and use it in real life. Mm. So you're given the general idea. And do you go and do some research yourself then on it? Um, do you go to the internet? Do you watch documentaries? Yeah, I wouldn't say I would, but I know that a lot of people would. They'd go to YouTube, Wikipedia, they'd look at stuff like mm. um, all of this, yeah. Mm. Okay, so let's uh, come over to you uh, on this one, Hamza. Do you feel uh, prejudice uh, is, is there because of this 9-11 issue? And how do you deal with it, if um, it is? Honestly, either I'm oblivious or mm. um, it's not there, but mm. what... I'm kind of stuck with this with this question is that let's say that it was I don't think I would have the potential to notice it because I can't exactly remember mm. what it was what it would be like mm. had then not been a 9-11 so let, let, of, let me let me take it a little bit further because people's experiences are different depending on what you do I mean, you guys are hard-working students as well and and you've got good families and your parents presumably are also giving you um, a lot of safety and security and you're in you're in kind of a safe environment do you imagine the kind of people you were talk, listening to on that video clip uh, would have the same kind of backgrounds as you? And if not, do you think it would be tougher in the city for young people like that? Do you think they'd be more exposed to that kind of prejudice, potentially? Definitely they'd be a lot more exposed because um, if they're not taught about it, then how are they going to know how to answer these questions? Like, um, you got, if they go out and then someone asks them, like, what's the principles behind this? Like, what does it say you're allowed to, you know, kill the non-believers and stuff? How, how do you get this idea, you know? So it would be a lot harder for them because they might, they might not be taught to it by their parents because, you know, might be unemployed or because they'd be in a lot of a tougher situation. Yeah, how good are your parents at, at equipping you for, for these kind of issues? Do they, do they also talk to you? You mentioned the madrasa, but what role do, do your parents play, perhaps, for the us? Do your parents get involved with you in, in discussing this kind of thing? Or is it too sensitive an issue and they avoid it? No, no, we do, we do sometimes talk about it. How it's, it's just around the table or something. Like, so like when a documentary is on and we talk about it and say, how bad is it and stuff like that. I say, we do talk about it in our household, yeah. Mm. So it's raised. So yeah. do you feel comfortable dealing with the issue? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because of my parents hacking and the kind of family household, but I would imagine for no, people without this kind of without this support, it would be hard for them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm just you know, very interested in what one of the uh, girls on the, the video was saying. She was talking about Britishness. And there were many good things about being in Britain, and she was, seemed to focus on the word Britishness. What does Britishness mean to you, Ramiz? As as a Muslim. As a Muslim, I th I think tolerance. That's honestly the first word word that would come to my mind because 
I feel that British people, British society, they're very tolerant to different religions, faiths, creeds. And that's why I think that Hamza, in particular, hasn't been exposed to so many things, so many um, um, acts of racism and acts of stereotypical injustice. That's why I think British, British society is, is very open to other views and mm. it takes it well. Okay. And uh, Amar, what do you think of Britishness? What does that mean to you? What does Britishness mean to me? Um, just, well, first thing that comes to my mind is Britishness is different. Because uh, I'm of different skin colour, different cultures. We eat different food, we watch different things. You know, it's um, totally different for me. So, like, if I were to go to someone who is British, right, if I went to their house, I wouldn't be eating, like, um, biryani or anything like that. Of that kind, I'd be eating, like, you know, biscuits or whatever. <laughs> and, um, Tea and crumpets <laughs> for you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah, so... So it's, it's, the, it's, it's cultural issues there. Yeah. The cultural differences are still there. They're definitely still there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, w Britishness to you, Fadal Vaz, how do you feel about the word Britishness and how does it relate to you? Britishness, I think it's, it's more about a cultural difference rather than, uh, uh, other than anything else, I think. Mm. Well, the values are the same? In Britishness and the, the culture you come from, are the values the same? Uh, I would say no. Mm. They're not the same, but I think because they have a different way of doing things here, and they have, they have, they have different things the way of doing that. Do, do you all feel British? How do you feel being called British? Just that, just that word, British. I would take pride in it, to be honest, because I think there's a lot of positive connotations that come with being called British, and you feel part of a society that's that worth that's worth being proud of, and that's why I, I quite enjoy being called British. Okay, what what do you feel about uh, say the word British uh, British Muslim? Does that mean something to you? Well, it means you're British, and then you're Muslim, so. What do, do you think of that? Um, do you com feel comfortable with, with that kind of a s label? I, I, I feel comfortable with it, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm British, that's one thing, but it also means that but I'm a Muslim, so that means I'm still practicing my religion the right way, as to say, and my British culture isn't, like, neglecting my religion. Mm. I would say I was not being comfortable with being called British Muslim because it kind of puts me in a different category. Yeah. Part of being British, so, so instead of being like, instead of, instead of encompassing all religion into the word British as a separate, a separate category just for British Muslims, so mm. it's a bit uncomfortable when you call mm. that name. Okay, yeah. it's you uh, uncomfortable, uh, and yourself. Uh, um, I think I'm on the same page as Fazal Abbas that if I was to be just put, uh, put as British, then that would mean that personally to me that means that. They've accepted me, yes. Um, the moment they start to say uh, British uh, Muslim, I kind of fall under the impression that they're like picking out the apple from the fruit salad. Picking up the differences, kind of. Yeah, they're like, okay, that's there, but yeah. Yeah, they're you're just, still something yeah, different. Yeah, it's not the same. Okay, uh, well, on that note, thank you very much, gentlemen. It, we, it's a topic that can run and run, and I've, I've rattled through it, but just to get a little snapshot, each one of these topics could become a, a full uh, discussion within itself. But thank you for sharing your, your personal views uh, on the idea of faith in the city and Britishness and British Islamic, um, uh, I guess, uh, identity. Uh, it's something we're going to run with and re revisit again and again. And I'm sure we'll have you back again talking about, about this topic at some stage in the near future again. Uh, as there you have it. Uh, faith in the city, yeah, a, a whole raft of ideas, thoughts, potential things for us to uh, unfold, unpack. Uh, it is a deeply compl complicated issue, the idea of Britishness, our Islamic faith, and how we adapt 
to British society, doubly difficult for young people who are having to negotiate all sorts of uh, um, values and cultures that are being fired at them. But uh, I, hopefully we, we're going to create this uh, continued dialogue platform for us to begin to unpick some of the uh, salient elements within this topic. Until the next show, Assalamu alaikum, Khuda Hafiz. The terrorists, when they do something, what do they do it in the name of? Yeah. yeah. So and so is doing it in the name of God, name of Allah, because they bring Islam into it. Non-Muslims or people at the will yeah, associate it with Islam because they, in the media they forget to say some some yeah. minority newspapers generally have um, both then Muslims all in the same line. They're not listening to real Muslims and what their views are all about. trying to say is look people like us it doesn't mean we're terrorists when they were born brought up in their bloody Islamic family taught we were taught to pray you know, like yeah, an the, early the stage the cute man of Muslims that actually are like about most Muslims are as British as the next British guy sitting next to them yeah. mm. they pay their taxes they abide to all laws and at the end of the day Islam is a good religion and it does bring out good in people it's just a few lost individuals that decided to blow some people off. personally I'd feel so for them because they just lost they don't understand what is going on and they just find an easy solution. But it's a pretty stupid one. This isn't right. It's totally against Islam. If you um, connect Islam and terrorism together, it contradicts with each other because Islam in itself is peace through the submission of the will of God and people, they go and bomb themselves. I wouldn't say that this is what Islam is about and walking out and going in the streets, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you know, this person looking at me might be thinking, you know, he might be having, you know, suicide bomber or whatever. It's not what Islam is about. Islam recognizes diversity and we believe that it's a manifestation of God's uh, genius, that he's created diversity amongst people. And in the Quran it actually says, we have created, created you in nations and tribes so that you may know each other, not that you may despise each other. Race is a medium for communication. Doesn't Britishness say, be who you are, yet be part of us? So we integrate, but not assimilate. What's good about Britain is the fact that we have like the right to practice our religion freely. The fact that we can wear khimaj al bab and like you know we can do whatever we want without people telling us what we can and cannot do. We can say whatever it is that we want, obviously within our limits, isn't it? Personally, I think it's really interesting to know what others believe and why they believe it, and then we can like see how they differentiate from Islam. You only get to know how similar that they really are when you get to know about them and living in Britain because like there's so many people that are from different um, areas and have their different religions it's, I think it's really good to learn about them La zona blanca.